what's going on in Delphi, Indiana? Um, now, for those of you who don't know, Richard Allen has been accused of murdering Abby and Libby. It was a case that was cold for five years. There were lots of suspicious people, lots of rumors, and ultimately some guy who wasn't even on the radar who works at CBS in the, uh, in the film developing department ended up getting arrested for the murder. Then we learned a lot more when the defense filed some documents um, last week. I want to go through really the, the, the headline, right? So he's accused of murdering these two girls. They believe they have some forensic evidence involving a, a bullet. Um, they have an admission by him and, and, and some other things, a couple other things. Not a ton of evidence in this case, but they have some eyewitnesses, et cetera. So they have put forth a completely different look or different uh, story about what actually happened to Libby and Abby. They're not saying there's not evidence to prove the case. They're saying he's innocent and we know exactly what happened to these two teenage girls in the woods uh, on, that, on that day in, in Delphi, Indiana, near the Monon High Bridge. So take a look, because I'm going to lay it out for you, and it's really a, a two-pronged conspiracy. That's the, the gist of this. And it begins with members of a pagan Norse religion called Odinism hijacked by white nationalists ritualistically sacrificed Abigail Williams and Liberty German. Odinism is the pagan religion referenced above and its followers are called Odinites. Odinites or Odinists here are enamored of the Viking Nordic culture. Evidence supports that at the crime scene these murdering Odinites left behind obvious signatures, symbols in the form of runes. These runes were formed with sticks, fashioned with tree branches, and painted using the blood of Liberty German. Sticks and tree branches were deliberately and carefully, proficiently placed on each girl in a certain arrangement mimicking certain runes. At least one of the branches appeared to have its end cut off cleanly by some type of tool, like an electric saw, providing proof of a preconceived plan. Additionally, the blood of Liberty German was used as the paint to mark a tree with a rune that looks similar to the letter F. With a simple Google search, these runes would be identifiable as one of the many calling cards of this pagan religious cult. Okay. They also described the scene where Abby and Libby were murdered. With that information, we put together this graphic. This was not something that they created. We created this based upon their description of what Abby and Libby looked like. And the allegation is that the bodies were posed and these sticks were put in a very specific manner to send some sort of a message. And there was a tree with a marking of what they said was an F. Now, that's the first prong, okay? Is that the Odinites are responsible for the murder in the woods. This ritualistic sacrifice in the middle of the day. I mean, middle of the day. It's not, a, it's not a nighttime ritual. This is a ritual in the middle of the day. Now, another piece of the, the prosecution case against Richard Allen is that he confessed. Take a look. On April 3rd, 2023, Richard Allen made a phone call to his wife, Kathy Allen. This is when he's incarcerated after being arrested. In that phone call, Richard Allen admits several times that he killed Abby and Libby. Investigators had the phone call transcribed, and the transcription confirms that Richard Allen admits that he committed the murders of Abigail Williams and Liberty German. He admits several times within the phone call that he committed the offenses as charged. His wife, Kathy Allen, ends the phone call abruptly. Big part of the prosecution case. You get arrested, you make the phone call, everything's recorded, it's monitored. And in this case, they're saying 
he basically spilled his guts to his, his wife. Now, take a look at part two of the Odinite conspiracy connected to this case involving Richard Allen, according to the defense. Normally, corrections officers were within earshot of every conversation between Richard and his attorneys and between Richard and his wife, close enough that Richard would have to be worried about any conversation with his attorneys and with his wife being overheard by corrections officers. Corrections officers even required that Richard Allen be positioned facing the window where the corrections officer was videotaping the attorney visits with the handheld camcorder. This positioning of Richard Allen's body would allow the corrections officers to videotape Richard Allen's mouth as he talked to his attorneys. This is the key. Richard would therefore not be able to privately discuss anything with his attorneys such as, and this is the quote, the guards are telling me that my wife and family will be killed unless I call my wife and tell her that I killed those girls. Okay? He is alleging that the guards were threatening to kill his wife and family unless he called them to confess. Why is this significant? Because the defense is also alleging that these patches, the triangles in Odin we trust, were on the uniforms of the corrections officers. You following that? Those patches on the corrections officers, meaning they're Odinites. The two prongs again of this conspiracy alleged by the defense one, the Odinites sacrificed and murdered these two girls in the woods, down the hill from the, the uh, Monin High Bridge in the middle of the day. And then when he was arrested and incarcerated, he's being guarded by Odinites, who then threatened to kill his family like they had killed, I guess, apparently, Abby and Libby, unless he confessed. They were framing the guy who develops pictures at the CVS. That's the defense. Let's bring in the think tank. Can that be sold in court? Joining us in Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey, criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor Al Wunsch III. Also joining us in Stanford, Connecticut, criminal defense attorney Darnell Crossland. And in Cleveland, Ohio, retired judge, former criminal prosecutor for Cuyahoga County and judicial fellow at the National Judicial College, uh, Judge Gail Byers. Great to see everyone tonight. Al, I'll start with you. Wait, okay. wait first, first, just a show of hands. Don't say anything. Before this, has anyone ever heard of Odinism? Okay. I'll, th I'll see everyone again. Before this, has anyone ever spoken to an Odinite? Oh, he's Al. pointing at Al. You got to point the other no, way, Darnell. No. You haven't spoken one. All right, Al, let me start with you. Can this thing be sold yes. in a court? Does it make any sense? Now, we've, we've, we've prosecuted, I mean, we've seen cases where these crazy conspiracies are prosecuted like the doomsday cult mom. So well, I know see, cults and strange beliefs <clears throat> actually exist but to this extent? Well, what's interesting to me is that this, this so-called cult, okay, worships Odin and Thor, okay, and, and Loki, okay? So we have, like, the rest of the Marvel co comics going forward here. It is a religion or a, a movement that was sort of adopted by the Nazis, um, and it is a white supremacist group, okay, that has kind of taken over on it. Now, you have a scenario here that, uh, you know, in Oslo, they had that man that went into the uh, uh, camp and killed all those people. He claimed he was an Odinist uh, and that he was doing it for that purpose because he was an Odinist. But it, it, I can't imagine that a white supremacist group would kill two young white girls. 
So, I mean, it seems odd to me that if you're going to be a white supremacist group and you have a belief that the whites are superior and that they should not be mixing races, then the last thing you're going to do is kill two white young girls who could grow up to produce other Odinists and, and other uh, neo-Nazis. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And with regards to the fact that the guy is a photographer, you know, he works at the, the Walmart or whatever. CVS. Developing photos <clears throat> at CVS. Okay. We all saw the movie, you know, One Hour Photo, Vin. So it could be actually something that could happen. All right, Darnell, um, is this something that you would be comfortable presenting to a... Now, they, they name specific names as well in the papers. We have not uh, repeated those names on the air, but there are specific people they are, are going after here. Um, now, the motivation for these uh, white nationalist Odinists was that apparently, according to someone somewhere, is alleging that one of the girl's mothers may have been dating interracially. Mm. Okay. Well, the, the first thing I, I just wanted to request, um, since we have the honor of having a judge with us today, if Al talks too much, can the judge hold him in contempt on the court TV? Absolutely. <laughs> you, you know, I, I, much like the Odinists, I'm going to start drinking mead every time we have uh, Darnell speaking. That's the only way to so, be able to tolerate so, it. So, Vinny, um, I think, you know, the funny thing about whether I'm comfortable prosecuting, I mean, defending this case, is that it sounds like when you take away the odinist and you know all that other stuff it sounds like the, the defense is i didn't do it someone else did it and here's the evidence um and if they're saying that there's evidence dna evidence or trace evidence of blood or no whatever, they're saying there's sticks there's a I bunch of sticks that. that are That's aligned a certain way and the prison yeah. guards are odinists and they compelled him to confess to his wife they were That's threatening the her life yeah. and he couldn't tell yeah. his lawyers anything because they were videotaping him and um they were he was afraid that they were good mouth readers or lip right, readers right. That's a, so that's the second part of the conspiracy the first part is again we don't have dna or trace stuff we have sticks so now we have to argue to the jury about these sticks and you got to hope that the jury could follow this argument then the second part is true when we go see our clients in jail they make me sit with my back to the uh, to the door, and they can look at the person in front of me. They never videotaping it with a camcorder, but they just want us to sit that way. Um, so if he's saying that they were videotaping with a camcorder and he could tie it to the sticks, then maybe these guards have direct involvement with the murder. All I'm saying is that when you present older knights and this theory to a jury, they're probably going to be just as shocked as I am, and that's going to make the hard sell. Judge Gail Byers. Your thoughts? Vinny, I think about the fact that in my days as a prosecutor, um, although as outrageous as all of this sounds, remember, you only have to convince one juror. And as has been said, this seems like it's completely beyond the pale, right? You've got the idea that there are camcorders, which I'm not even sure where you can purchase one these days, but apparently somebody has a direct line to some old technology. But you've got sticks, you've got camcorders, You've got recordings, you've got lip readers. Um, in this day and age, jurors are really looking for sophisticated evidence that really supports the prosecutor's argument. And so I agree that there's gonna be this desire to say, hey, you know, is there anything other than sticks? Is there DNA on the sticks? Are there footprints in, um, in the woods? Do they match a shoe print from this defendant? Or Let me ask you this. Else? Let me ask you this, Judge. If, and I don't know if they have evidence of it, if they had a photograph of a prison guard with the triangle in Odin We Trust patch on it, on his uniform, would that alone, with the rest of the evidence they're going to present, but an, an actual photo of a prison guard wearing the Odinism uh, patches, how far would that be able to move or potentially move a jury close to reasonable uh, doubt, which would be a reasonable alternative theory. 
I, I think, as we all know, it all depends, right? The question is going to be, did that guard ever work the same shift that that prisoner was there? Did they ever have any contact? How did he know that he had the patch on? Um, so tying all those things together, here's what I think. As outrageous and crazy as it sounds, I think that you could actually piece together some string of a story or explanation as to why this actually might make sense for defense. I just don't know if it gets it over the finish line. But again, all you need to convince is one person um, beyond a reasonable doubt that it's possible that these Odinites and, and the rest of the Marvel clan, I guess, committed this murder and not the defendant. And, and I was, go ahead, Al, uh, 10 seconds, go ahead. Uh, well, I'm a DC guy, so, you know, I'm uh, going to be looking at Batman and Alfredism as my new book. Alfredism, but, there you go. Yes. Perfect. But, All uh, right. It's ridiculous. And where's Noah <laughs> Syndergaard? That's what I want to know. Okay.